Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and we're going to take a first look at a Penn Battle 5000 uh, Series 3. And uh, this one, you can tell, we've uh, had a little bit of use on this one already. And for many of our viewers out there, they're aware that I do uh, charter boats and the like, and this particular charter boat has uh, switched over to some spinning reels because of the uh, type of fishing that they're doing and uh, they've purchased some Battle 3s. And a lot of times I get asked the question, why don't you work on the very newest of the reels? Well, there's a short answer for that. The newest of the reels are normally covered by about a year warranty. And uh, those uh, reels come back to the manufacturer if they break within that warranty period. So I don't see them. And from a service standpoint, they um, the recommended service is about an annual basis. So I'll see them about a year out. Now this reel was released in 2020. Uh, it's got pretty good uh, reputation. Uh, you won't see this reel go back for warranty because it's a commercial use reel and those are kind of excluded in the warranty periods from breakage, right, because of the heavy usage and the like. But we got a, uh, a couple of things going on here. This came to me because it happens to be missing a handle and missing the, the side plate cap. And that happens on these charter boats a lot of times. A uh, person will come out and rent the reel for the day the handle is on the opposite side of uh, where they would like to fish it. It might be on the right side and, and they'd like it on the left. And instead of waiting for a mate to come over and switch it, they try to do it themselves. And more times than not, they'll drop the cap somewhere or they won't install it properly. And in this case, uh, whoever tried to uh, switch it over actually dropped the handle overboard. So that's kind of interesting, right? But what I thought I would do is I would take this reel apart completely, give you an inside look at the pen battle and uh, this is the Battle 3 5000 and uh, if you're thinking of buying one of them then you'll kind of get an idea of, of what the, uh, the reel looks like from a manufacturer's standpoint and uh, of course as I take it apart you'll see a little bit about how to service that as well. So just a couple of things, the Battle 2 versus the Battle 3, about the only difference is the uh, sealed stainless steel ball bearings as opposed to the shielded bearings. Everything else for the most part is kind of the same. And uh, interestingly enough, the um, Fierce 3 is actually comparable to the Battle 2. So if you're looking for a Battle 2, not the Battle 3, and you buy the new Fierce 3, pretty much I've got the identical package uh, with the upgrades that they did between the Fierce 2 and the Fierce 3. So uh, let's take this apart. We're going to take it all apart just to show you what this is all about. As I mentioned, the handle is not here, so that's... Uh, Something that needs to be replaced and parts have been ordered and we're going to try and go get them. But uh, in the meantime, just assume that I've taken that handle off. And as I take these other pieces off, I want to take a moment to thank our first responders and essential personnel for all they're doing to keep us safe during the pandemic. Yep, things are back on the rise again. That's a little scary. And uh, these folks, uh, they've been doing this for a year plus now. It's amazing. The, uh, that they don't burn out and just get tired of all of this, but they're true to their profession. They're doing a great job, and I really want to say thank you to them. All right, we're going to start right up top here. So you remove the adjuster. There's a uh, kind of a, a triangular clip in here that rides in a groove that holds your drag washers in. We should see HT100 drag washers in here, and HT100 is kind of Penn's upper level washer. So I got a question on this the other day, which was kind of interesting. They said I didn't see any eared washers in the uh, in the drag stack. Why is that? Well, interestingly enough, they, they found a way around that. What they found was if you put the tabs on the washers, those tabs are going to hold the spool tight. And then the rectangular part of the keyed washer is going to hold to the axle shaft. And when you're holding the spool tight, the axle shaft tight, then the, the upper um, end of the reel is tight, and that's how you get, uh, get the max drag. So they've eliminated the ear washer by putting the ears onto the, uh, the HT100s. So you can tell this is totally salted. And one of the reasons why it gets totally salted is on top drag reels, like this one, all the fishing that's going on, the line is coming in, just like that, and it's coming in from water, and in this case it's salt water, so that salt water contains 
the salt it contains the um, um, contaminants and just water by itself well when it gets in here the only place to drain is through this hole here that's going to let it out and you can see underneath here that we have an awful lot of salt underneath as well so the uh, and these slots in the spool don't have uh, don't help either in terms of uh, when you're cranking the uh, the spray of the ocean and that is going to nest under here so a lot of folks ask me you know it's a new reel when should I have it serviced and I say at a minimum service this thing on an annual basis and if you're in commercial use or you just uh, are an avid fisherman and you're getting out there each uh, each week maybe even more than once a week then the best thing that you can do with this is to take it down at least midway through the season if not more you're gonna have to judge the conditions that you're in and if you're in a harsh environment the best way to protect this reel is to uh, to just do frequent cleanups rinse it off with fresh water as you uh, end your trip this has never been done here and um, just spray it down with a lubricant like a WD-40 which is a water displacement product and uh, that'll keep you fishing this reel for a long time to come so we showed you the drag stack it's HT 100s uh, the old pen fierce line used to have uh, felt washers and as I mentioned the, the fierce 3 now fierce 3 goes to the HT 100 drag washer setup as well so uh, interesting to know so that's the top end of your reel and then we're going to come underneath here we're going to open up the case We'll show you what's inside this reel. Don't want false advertising here. We said that this would be an inside look at a pen battle, and I'm going to make sure that you get that inside look part by part. There's four case screws here. They come off with a um, Phillips head screwdriver. And I believe these are stainless. They're coming out pretty good. If you have trouble, and Sometimes I have trouble with this boat's reels because they don't rinse them down. Take a penetrating oil like a WD-40. Spray down the, the joints where those screws are. Let them sit. And uh, what you will get is a uh, loosened up uh, from the debris, the salt and the like. And we can see there's heavy salt here. So This, uh, this reel received high praise as it came out in, in 2020 received high praises and awards as a well-designed reel. I know a lot of people that are pen battle fans out there and uh, rightfully so, they're, they're decent reels. And uh, these are running about $120 now. And that's uh, from a, uh, a, a fishing boat rental experience. If, if that's what we want to judge this by economics, that says that he can rent the, the, the rod and reel. Oh. Probably for $10, I'm thinking. If he rents $10, he's got to run a couple of trips before uh, he gets payback on this. So it's kind of kind of dicey. These things have a lot of moving parts. They're not as rugged as the conventional reels, like a Jig Master, which is also part of his rental fleet. Uh, and uh, he has to get a little bit more for those rentals because the... Uh, Things break. Lots of things break. We just lost a handle. A handle is a $25 piece uh, to, to get a replacement. And they're not even in the market yet. You've got to go use the, uh, the older ones. But um, we'll see how he makes out with this. So first thing to notice is you have a full metal case. There's, it's not graphite. It's metal on both sides. You have a sealed bearing as opposed to a um, uh, shielded bearing. That was one of the upgrades, so theoretically you don't need to do anything with the bearings. Uh, I always try to get a little bit of oil on them, just in the hopes that it's going to seep through. But uh, in this case, we have a sealed bearing. We actually have uh, 5 plus 1 in the bearing category. So you have two on the side, one on a pinion, one on the crosswind gear, I believe. And I think the other one is probably in the handle, which is missing. But you do have five bearings here. I think the Fierce only has four. I think the Fierce does not have the bearing on the, um, cr the crosswind gear. All right, we're going to pull the shaft out. The shaft is in good condition. 
This is a CNC machined main gear now. That's different from uh, some of the older ones. This one's uh, got a redesign to it. I'll just put these pieces in here. Let's pull that out. And we're going to burn this a little bit stuck there, so we're going to go ahead and take the cross wind block out to get the other piece out. Cross wind block comes out. So we want to remove the cross wind gear. And I'm just putting these parts on the, the bench for now, but we will come back and uh, put these into my parts tray. You'll also notice I'm keeping a, a gloved hand here. And I do that just to keep my the greases off of my, my hand. This is your cross wind gear. This is your CNC cut gear. And there you go. So we're already we're tight on this bearing. We'll get the bearing off. But it is tight. And that's because that side plate cover is missing. So all that salt you saw accumulating on the uh, the real spool and the outside of that spool with that open gap here without the cover it's come into the gear set now it started to accumulate on the fringe here and you have to flush that off to get that bearing off and I can feel sand in there as well so there's a lot of stuff that's come in through that uh, hole in the side body this is a beautiful gear it's a uh, CNC cut which is the highest in terms of um, precision and I think it's it's stainless, but I, I don't I can't say for sure if it is or not. But at any rate, that's a nice gear. That's an upgrade from the, the prior battles. Your crosswind gear, crosswind block, the screw for the crosswind block, side plate bearing, and in here there should be under all of this a bearing around the. Uh, oh, there's not. Okay, so I don't have a schematic. The schematic. I, I, the site that I use for the schematics doesn't have it posted yet. All right, is it in the back here? So I'm trying to find that, that elusive extra bearing. Hmm. All right, well, we, we've learned there. Let's come up top here. We'll show you what's under the rotor. We'll pull that pinion gear out. This one needs a full service anyway. It's just like it'd be irresponsible to just take a reel like this, go put the handle back on and send it back out. Especially when you see all the, the damage from the salt. And uh, you want to do a good cleaning on this as well. I do get questions all the time about what do I use as a cleaner. And uh, the cleaner most of the time that I use is simply penetrating oil. It seems to do a good job. And uh, it um, it's efficient, it's effective, and it's relatively reasonable. This is a uh, traditional threaded nut. When you open that up, notice you've got a little plastic collar here. It's a plastic bushing. That's for your spool. And sometimes that slips out when you're pulling the spool out. So just make sure you know that it's there. Sometimes it'll actually pop off when you do this, right, when you remove that. Next up, then, we have the anti-reverse. Take that out. There's a collar spring here, you can see it's a triangular in nature. Kind of starts here, runs around this eccentric, and there's a point on that right here, which may or may not be easy to see. Let's see if we can move it up a little bit. There's a point right there. That point goes into that slot here on your, uh, on your anti-reverse dog. Now this is a secondary piece. The primary anti-reverse is the anti-reverse clutch, but there's also ridges underneath here and with something else that needs to be cleaned. But you can see the, red, red, uh, the ridges here. And that uh, plastic dog is a secondary fail-safe on that anti-reverse. All right, let's just uh, finish up with the dissection of this reel so that you can see all the pieces and parts that we have. There's three screws here. You want to take those off. This is going to allow us to remove the pinion assembly. And you'll see your anti-reverse bearing and the way that that works as well. So overall, this high quality parts in here. I think that he made a good choice. If you're looking for a rugged reel that's going to stand a lot of fishing, 
And my guess this reel has probably been in service for 90 days now, and it's probably been in service uh, every day or close to it, or at least the days he's going out fishing. I mean, you know, weather permitting and all that sort of stuff, right? But uh, you're going to see this kind of stuff on heavy usage reels. That's one of the reasons why the, uh, the manufacturers don't warrant those for commercial use. So, all right, we took the three of those out. There's a collar here that comes up next. This one's easy enough to, to uh, mess up. This is the one with that little hook on it. Just remember that the hook points up. And also, there's a, it looks like two grooves. It looks like there's a groove here and a groove here. The bottom groove on this collar is where that spring rides in case your spring came off. All right, we're going to take this off now. And you want to notice if that piece is uh, symmetrical or not. In this case, I think that we have a flat side over here. That flat side is going to ride where you have your anti-reverse so it doesn't bump in. If you uh, put this in any other way, you're going to find that, that uh, you're going to have interference here. So just remember on the, the way that that comes off. Good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. If you're uh, in any way concerned about being able to get the reel back together and I get enough reel in the bag projects to say that it's a real concern. But if you have a, uh, a concern about that, the pictures will help you with the orientation. This should just pull out now. And it did. Sometimes it won't. You look at all that salt we had, and sometimes that salt will get in these crevices here. I get a lot of questions about how do I get this off. Well, you're just going to have to keep soaking it and penetrating oil until you do that. This is your, uh, your pinion gear and your anti-reverse and uh, some other bearings in here. I think there's two bearings here. One, two, three, four. I was still missing one. Maybe in the handle. Okay, the, uh, there's a collar here. You're going to notice that there's two different sides on this collar. There's kind of a, a proud side here, if you will, with a little indentation on it. And then there's a flat side. Note that the flat side goes up. So here's your bearing. You've got a cup. This is sitting this way. I just uh, had somebody send in a reel to me and said the reel wasn't performing as well as uh, when they initially did it. And what happened was, instead of putting it up position, they put it in the down position, like that. And that, uh, that little gap there on the back end of this cup is for this uh, ferrule. And what was happening was when they were turning it upside down, you didn't have that gap and the rotor wouldn't sit on this properly. So pay attention to those small details, they mean a lot. This is your anti-reverse clutch. When you're turning, turning the wheel, uh, reel, it's gonna go wonderfully and then as soon as you go to hit the brake it's going to grab there's two sides to this there's a top and a bottom that's important to tell you the uh, the orientation there's a chrome or, or silver sided and there's a plastic sided somebody re reinstalled this this way put it in upside down and said my handle won't turn what did I do wrong? Well, the clutch is always on in the wrong direction. So as you go to try and spin this wheel, it's grabbing. It won't allow this pinion gear to turn. So note the orientation of that and that the plastic side in this case is down. Here's your, your next shielded bearing. And here's your pinion gear. So the, uh, the reel is pretty good. The, the engineering is solid. There's a lot of ball bearings in the right places. I've seen adds now for 10 or 12 crazy number of burrings and spinning wheels. And most of them are, are not, um, not very significant in terms of the ease of function or that that they provide. But uh, in this case, those burrings are all in the right places. So I've been asked what the right number is. I say at a minimum three, you need one here, one here, and one on your pinion gear. That's going to be the smoothest performance. And then the rest of them are kind of... Uh, marginalized but uh, in this case we've got four because we have a uh, bearing here they count this as a bearing the clutch make sure it's in the downside this is another bearing remember that has the recess on it to cover that gap here so make sure that goes in the right way and you have a, a very functional and nice stack so the good news with this reel is that uh, we got a 
chance to catch this one before it completely freezes. You can see the salt accumulation in the, in the case here because that, that uh, little side plate cover is missing. We've got to go get one of those uh, to, to complete the service on this wheel in addition to the handle. But for the most part, that stuff did not get in and contaminate the greases, did not come in and jam in the gears, uh, and it certainly didn't uh, trap in, in any of the stuff that was core to the functioning of this wheel. So there you have it. That is the Pen 5000 Battle 3 Series. It's a nice reel, well engineered, about $120. Comes apart pretty easy, uh, not that difficult to service. Uh, some of the uh, ideas I gave you in here should tell you a little bit about that. And uh, this one's going to get out there fishing again. Just need to replace a couple of uh, parts that unfortunately fell off. One more thing, these are the uh, HT100s are kind of a carbon text sort of a thing. You can see that we've got salt on there. One of the things you can do with the salt, use that penetrating oil as a dissolver. Mop that off. Use a paper towel or something. Kind of mop it off. Make sure that it's nice and clean. Kind of rubs off pretty easy. And then go back on and use a, uh, a dry or your, your real grease to keep those fresh. So that's, uh, that's my review of the, uh, the Pen Battle 3 5000. And uh, kind of like the reel. This one is uh, working well. I've uh, had a couple questions before about uh, keeping the bail functioning. Just to take your all-purpose uh, penetrating oil there, get it in the seams. They're working in a couple of times, and uh, that'll uh, dissolve any kinds of salts or grease that are built up there. It's also going to take care of all the salt that's underneath here. When you go to service the reel, a little bit of oil, not a lot, right where that slide bar is, that is for your trip ramp. Just get that done, and uh, this wheel can go fishing again. And uh, in this case, it's uh, it's there to make the uh, boat some money by uh, having some customers come aboard that don't have their uh, don't have the equipment to go fishing. And uh, it's a win-win for everybody when these things are working the right way. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, please, if you like it, subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit the notifications, and uh, that'll let you know what I'm posting and when I'm posting. And uh, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, well, please leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer them for you. And uh, finally, if you have a reel that needs to be worked on and you're not up for uh, doing the service yourself, the service or repair, I do that by mail. And if you uh, contact me on the email on the business card that follows, I'll be happy to provide you with that repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.